My name is David Ray Morris. I came back um, first to the Mississippi Gulf Coast on Friday, September the 2nd, on assignment for the New York Times. I have friends in Bay St. Louis who I went to visit often, and we would go to the beach and swim, and there were these grand mansions on the boulevard, on Beach Boulevard, and uh, everything was gone. So it was very difficult for me to find any kind of reference point uh, to, to, to know where I was, because everything was gone and all there was was piles of debris. The, the only way I knew how to make any, any sense out of what was going on was to work. And that meant getting out amongst, you know, in the middle of the debris and just shooting. And uh, in a sense, it was like shooting fish in a barrel because everywhere you turned, there was a picture or there were several pictures or there was a whole story. And it never let up. Um, I didn't make it into New Orleans until September the 8th which was a Thursday, and the first day I was in town, I shot 750 frames. The second day, I think I shot 600. The third day, I think I only shot 450. But I shot 2,000 frames the first three days I was in New Orleans because there was so much going on and so much to shoot and so much to absorb. And, you know, on that, on that level, the camera also serves as a sort of a buffer. It protects you from um, the emotion. But at the same time, since I was not on assignment those first three days I was in New Orleans, I didn't have to worry about uh, pleasing an editor in New York or Washington. I didn't have to worry about making a deadline. So I was free to absorb the emotion of it. Uh, so it sort of worked both ways. I was allowed to feel and I was allowed to work. I lived for two weeks in Algiers in the middle of September uh, when I was shooting uh, I had a two-week assignment, so I, I had regular work, but I was Algiers was like nothing had happened. They had power and water and satellite TV, and so it was very much the 20th century, and I would drive back across the bridge into town, and it would be like going back to the 19th century. The first two days I was in New Orleans, I came in with uh, friends, and they drove, so... Neither, none of us were on specific assignment and none of us were on deadlines, so we just wandered around. Uh, we knew approximately like where the flood line was, so uh, we knew that we had, had to stay close to the river. Um, so when we came into town through all the checkpoints, we, we went down um, Causeway Boulevard in Metairie to River Road to, uh, to Magazine uh, into the French Quarter into the bywater. Um, otherwise we could you could you could get up on the the ten and the six ten in downtown and up in Gentilly. You had to be very careful though because people were going the wrong way down the highway. People were going up down ramps and down up ramps. So there was there were really no and down one way streets. There were no traffic laws. So you, you had to be aware of that. Plus, a lot of the, the street signs were gone. They'd been blown away. A lot of the directional signs were gone. Uh, some of the, the best pictures I took on that first day were taken off the ramp of the, the 610 or off the 10 overlooking um, the cemeteries or overlooking neighborhoods that were flooded with water. By the time I got into New Orleans on September the, September the 8th, um, all of the the major events that happened immediately following Katrina were over. The the Superdome had been evacuated. The convention center had been evacuated. So the story was no longer about um, evacuation. Now it, it sort of transitioned into specific search and rescue, uh, and it was not hard at all to find search and rescue patrols. In fact, we drove into Gentilly on 610 and got down on the ramp of Elysian Fields and there were there was there was a staging area of National Guard and uh, and I think regular army working out of boats uh, doing search and rescue in plain sight so we didn't even have to get our feet wet no pun intended um, we didn't even have to get in a boat we could just stand on the ramp and which had a very nice elevated angle, and shoot them going house to house. 
one of the first times I went to the Lower Ninth Ward, um, I was driving up Jordan Avenue and two German Shepherds chased my car. And I stopped and turned and took pictures of them. And the lead one sort of stopped and looked at me as sort of askance, and then they both ran away. Uh, but th- there, there were there were stray dogs everywhere. I was standing on the corner of um, Poland and Murray, and I looked down about a block, and it was late afternoon, and there was this dog about a block away on crossing uh, on Lesseps, crossing Murray and Lesseps, and it was slinking. It's the only way to describe it. It was, and and I t- shot two or three frames, but the one that I got was. You, know, you look at the body language of the of the dog. It was just so beaten down, um, so devastated. Those first three days that I was in town, I made a number of very compelling pictures. Um, the one that seems to stand out the most is a picture that I call Fence Posts and Floodwaters, uh, which was shot... Um, off the 610 in Gentilly somewhere. I, I, I don't know exactly where it is, and I've gone back to try to find it and have been unsuccessful, uh, probably because the fence was torn down. Um, but that picture, it's, a, it's a, a picture of the top of a picket fence, basic all-American picket fence, and only about three inches of the top of the fence is showing, and the rest is um, water, muck, uh, the reflection of clouds, it's on on the one hand a sort of a beautifully graphic, um, linear scene. On the other hand, if you look closely at the details of the water, it really reflects the what we've been through and where you know where we've been and where we're going. Uh, and people have responded uh, very strongly to that picture. Another picture that was taken probably not 15 minutes later, was a picture uh, from the um, off-ramp of Elysian Fields of a search and rescue team going down Humanity Street. And all you see is water and houses underwater and this jet ski going by and this submerged street sign uh, or submerged telephone pole with the street sign saying Humanity Street. And I call that search and rescue on Humanity Street. Um, There were so many images those first three days. and that's that's sort of the the hard thing that I have to worry about now a year and a half later is where do you go after having done so much good work um, you know I feel really proud about the work I've done but it's been really hard you know in recent months to figure out what the story is now and not only what the story is now but how do I emotionally, where am I emotionally? What what am I up for? I decided a long time ago I could no longer go into houses and take pictures of you know people going to their houses for the first time, which I did a number of times. I can no longer, it's really hard for me to even go into houses um, when they're gutting them. Um, you know, I, I a- after this much time, I want to find some, something uplifting. I want to, I want to, work on stories that are more optimistic because you know we've all been down a dark road and we got to come back